Well, it's that part of the day again, 2.33 a.m., uploading yesterday's vlog. Welcome to today's. So today's Friday, December 30th, second to the last day of 2011. Holy crap. Um, and I don't think I showed you in yesterday's vlog. Actually, I know I didn't because I just edited it. But I got this, the Peak Research BMW Engine Analyzer. They make a couple of these. The R5 is the super cheap one. Uh, that really just, I think, just tells you the codes and that's it. This is the R5 and FCX3, which does a whole bunch of stuff, tells you the codes, you can reset all your lights, it gives you pretty much all the power that the port under the hood gives you. Here's the list of the codes, there's like 20 pages of fault codes that you could get with this. Um, so this tells you everything through this diagnostics port under the hood uh, from 1987 to 2000. In 2001 they went to the OBD2 connector which is here in the footwell. I have that too. I actually have both. Um, that one is much more limited in what it can do. There's only 16 pins. It's, it's more of a digital system. This is the older analog system. There's 20 pins and it tells you everything. So I'll show you the tool here. So I've actually known about this thing for a while and I looked at it online a long time ago and I determined it was too expensive for what it does. $175. Found one on eBay used for 90 bucks. Almost got that, but I got $75 in, IT in Amazon gift cards for Christmas and birthday. So I just decided to get a new one on Amazon, but I think I paid 140 for it or 160, but really that was only 65 cash out of pocket since I had the gift cards. But it's a lot smaller than I thought. It's in here. If I can get a hand to open it up. And uh, it's it really does not feel like a $175 product. I mean, it's pretty well built. These buttons are really solid and it's made out of nice plastic. It's got a little screen there. Uh, but there's the pins that it uses. Um, it only uses, I guess, six pins and that thing in the middle just ensures that it fits right into the engine. Uh, so I just read through this uh, a couple minutes ago and I thought that if I used it, it would reset all the lights, but this is what this is. The MIL reset, which is the malfunction indicator light but it'll only reset the lights if I select CE and then click go. So I'm just going to do FC, which is fault code read, and uh, just kind of go out and test it in the car. And I already know the codes, but we'll see how it works. So I just need to pop the hood. It's so dark, I wish the flip did better in uh, dimmer lighting situations, but I've got all the lights on here that work. That light's never worked, no matter what bulb you put in it. And the serviceable attic that I can get through through that hole there ends about right here. And I see the wire goes over there and it's hot, but it's something in that fixture and we've never really bothered to deal with it. So we'll open the hood here. And the diagnostics port is over here by the washer fluid. This is just to protect it from crap that might get in there. And it even knows when it's on. Uh, so now it says that it wants the key in position two. So I'll do that. Okay, we're in position two. You can hear the... Um, engine pre stuff going on. Got the book here and now I've got to figure out how this lines up right. Looks like it wants the notch, notch up there which is good so this thing will actually fit on here. Oh, there we go. Okay so FC that would be the fault code readout. We'll hit go. It's thinking. Accessing the ECU. Okay so the first thing it says is 1B. And I know that it's not a six because they talked about that here. That's what a six looks like and that's what a B looks like. So one B, that means that I need to refer to table one B in here. So I'll find that. Okay, so there's table 18 and one B on that page. So then uh, to get the codes, I think we have to press go. All right, so if I press go, I've got AA. All right, so the AA was still referring to the code, or the table that I need to refer to. So code 69 is engine coolant temperature plausibility. That's one of the ones I know about. BMW diagnosed it as engine temperature implausible. That has to do with one of my mechanical gauges. The gauge for the engine temperature uh, coolant as well as the oil temperature, the gauge is not resetting accurately. It's like on a watch, if you magnetize the hand, zero is actually one, uh, and then position four would be position two. It's kind of off by two digits. Big deal, it's a gauge fault. Um, so that's why the engine never shows that it warms up right on the gauge, but it actually does. I checked the digital temperatures. So we'll hit go again. It'll pull the next code, E8, which uh, I'll have to find. There it is, evaporative emissions 
purge valve functional check, E8. Um, BMW diagnosed that as the carbon blockage in the actual engine here. Um, so I know about that. We'll hit go again to get B8, which means intake camshaft one Vanos position control. So it could be a camshaft sensor or something like that. Next, 90. There's the AA. I was wrong about that being part of table 18. AA is secondary air system flow too low. That has to do with the carbon two. But uh, code 90 is fuel control bank one, again, with uh, the carbon. Next, zero D, which means pre-cat oxygen sensor. Well, we know that needs to be replaced. CD, misfiring during warm up on cylinder one, having to do with spark plugs. CE, misfire during warm up cylinder two. Uh, F is, I'm gonna guess, cylinder three. D0 is misfire warm up on cylinder four. D5, uh, misfiring during warm up of multiple cylinders. Again, all of this is due to the spark plugs needing to be replaced. C6 is misfire cylinder three, spark plugs. C9, misfire cylinder five. CC, misfire multiple cylinders, spark plugs, and then that's it. So most of this stuff is misfires, and uh, which is all due to one thing. So when I say 11 codes, that freaked me out, that freaked my grandfather out who was there. Um, we all got really nervous. Wow, there's 11 problems that are probably gonna cost a crap ton of money, and it is. But as you just saw, most of those, mis most of those codes um, point to misfires, which is, um, Spark plugs. When your spark plugs are old, the distance between the little the little part that comes up and that that distance isn't right. They get carbon buildup on them, and they just don't work as they should. Now, I have never felt a misfire in this car. I don't actually know what a misfire would even feel like. I would expect that the engine would just run like crap and have no power. And well, that hasn't happened. So. Um, I guess it's just during warm-up and I notice that the engine is cold on warm-up surprise surprise It's been sitting and now you're trying to start it and create spark and it's it's not wanting to so We're gonna have all that fixed. I take it in on Tuesday and they're gonna have it for uh, They said it'll take like two days to do that But I would say I'll have it back by Friday next week I hope so I could reset that light right now But I'm not going to because I don't want BMW to get the car and be like wow most of those faults disappeared. I want them, since this is uh, an open bill, I guess, an open tab with them, I want them to know uh, that I haven't done anything except just have the computer tell me the codes again. So that's the Peak Research Engine Analyzer for proprietary BMWs. All right, it's 1227. We're on our way to our destinations. Uh, we'll show you when we get there. But we've got the best of what Cleveland has to offer today. We're truly blessed. It is 44 degrees, completely overcast, raining, and we've got fog and smog. Friggin' right we do. That's worse than LA. Yeah, way, way out there, you probably can barely see it, is Cleveland encased in smog. I mean, Ryan said it at the beginning. It is just like, I mean, that is pretty bad. That is, that's just, it's just dead. All right, guys, we came over here to Nissan. Actually, no. We came to see this. This is a Fisker Karma. We're here at the Saab dealer in North Olmsted, which is a little southwest of Cleveland. And uh, this is definitely one of the most beautiful cars I have ever seen behind the 2005 Focus and 2002 Gallant, of course. It's got really big wheels. That's one of the first things I notice. The roof here is all, uh, I guess that'd be solar panel technology. It's got a sticker in the window here at $112,850. Absolutely beautiful, though. Anybody ever seen one of these in person? This is uh, this is my first one. It's got front park distance control. Just beautiful. And here's the second thing we came to look at. We saw these at the auto show in Cleveland. Best car interior I have ever seen. Designed by Louis Vuitton. Thank you. Just beautiful.
This one back here may have different wheels, but still beautiful. You care to explain what happened? We're well, all the way up here. Mind, all parking spots are taken. This is the first one. Every, we had to drive all the way up to the top of the deck, and as far as I know, this is the last last spot in the deck. We can see other planets from up here. My nose is bleeding. We are on the fifth floor of this parking deck. Now we're going to go and see if we can find the Lotus one and the Apple Store too. Yep, just like Legacy Village. We found Dick's. There's the Apple Store. And uh, on the way here in the car, we found the Lotus. So we're going to go see if we can find it now. Yeah, they're hauling ass. It's about as fast as it gets around here. Holy crap. <laughs> and that is that is Ethernet, not Wi-Fi. Actually, I think Apple demo. Yeah, that is Wi-Fi. Wow, impressive. Cannon beat me to it. There's a present. And uh, th we've got a Lotus Evora here. It's a pretty nice little car. Looks like they want $75,550. It's pretty nice. I've seen a couple of the Evoras. I like it. X6 with license plate, BMW Joy. I like that. Yeah, so this is very nice up here. This, is, my dad was right. It's just a, a bigger legacy village. I wouldn't say that it's nicer. I just think it's bigger and they have more stops, right? Yeah. More stuff, it's not really nicer, but bigger. It's the Harry Lennon Quartet. And yes, I know that three is a trio, not a tritet or a quintet. Quartet, not a quintet. Quintet would be five, quartet would be four, and that thing's just a piece of shit. Yo! Santa Cleveland! Yeah. Home of the We're still getting decked over here. Uh, we just got off at East 9th from 77, which is now back there. And uh, it's this is a blast. We have made it into the city, and this is the building where my dad used to work at, uh, uh, what was it called? Was it, what was it called, Kenan? Where did he used to work? For, oh, you mean uh, Baker and Hostetler? Baker Hostetler Law Firm, right. He was their IT guy here uh, downtown. There's the Chase building, as I screw up the previous clip, and uh, Dollar Bank. Cleveland used to be the city of industry, now it's the city of insurance and banks and all kinds of people. There's an old building in Cleveland, and there's the reflection of Tower City, which is right only at the here. Right side. I think. Yeah, Porsche. Porsche. Right. Yeah, that would be Power City. Power City? Tower City! That's the Queen Bee, though. There's another old ass building. It looks like a church to me. Ah, Jesus! Palmer. H2. All right, we're coming over here to meet Mike. He should be inside. Log Vortex. So we're Great. Here. So uh, you, you talk to your people, I'll talk to my people. How you doing, guys? How you doing? So we got home from up in Cleveland and we washed the car. We didn't even really dry it off because it's been raining, but we got all the dirt and the crap that was on it. It'll be a Canon vlog. Now, we're over here where Taylor works and we're just going to go in and visit him, say hi, see how he's doing. We're over here at Best Buy in Macedonia. Okay, all right, bye! Okay, there you are. We just had to say hi, but you've got your work cut out, so we're not going to hold you up. Uh, nice shirt. You should wear it to school. Seriously? Yeah. All right, well, no. enjoy. This is a really long video. Uh, one, I want to apologize for that. Um, watching Colt's vlog here from the other day, talking to some guys online. Uh, I'm going to edit this together now and try to get it up. I said before, I apologize, it's so long. Um, I just ordered 16 gigs of RAM for my Mac. Thank you to, uh, I'll never say your name right, so I won't try, but I think you tweeted me, no, you emailed me a link to it on Newegg. So I bought it. $149 for 16 gigs of Corsair RAM, so that's incredible. So I'm going to give the 8 to somebody I know that needs it, and um, I'll enjoy the 16th. So tomorrow's Saturday, and I'll talk to you then. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave me a comment down below. Talk to you tomorrow. Good night.